a revolutionary greetings, comrades, were saddened by what is happening in our communities, the violence that is taking place. We condemn any criminal activities that is happening. It doesn't matter who the person is who's committing crime. Whether one is a migrant, one is a South African, we condemn any criminal activity in our communities. And we must isolate criminal gangs in our communities. But criminality, as, as you would know, it has its roots in the capitalist system. Violence was used as a tool when colonialists came to, to colonize us. They used the violence. They used the violence to steal our land. Were to respond in kind in the struggle for national liberation, in the struggle against colonialism, in the struggle against apartheid. We should not at any stage find ourselves going back to black on uh, black on black violence. We are all Africans. Yes. We are from different nationalities. I'm from Zimbabwe, some are South African, some are from Eswatini, Nigeria, and so on. We are from different nationalities, but we are all Africans. And we know the violence against each other, it's evils. We have seen violence across the continent in the name of ethnicity be it Nigeria, be it uh, the genocide in Rwanda, be it the genocide in Matebeleland, in Zimbabwe, Matebeleland and Midlands. We see violence everywhere across the continent. Many black people have died in the hands of other black people in our continent because of violence. We kill each other best on one sound they make when they speak, simple because I do not speak your language. You are offended by the kick that comes from my mouth. You then kill me on the basis that I'm not from your clan. Politicians have used the poor people to fight each other. It is politicians that have been funding ethnic wars across Africa and we've been used, the majority of us, to fight each other. And we know the evils of violence against each other in Africa. So all of us who have a responsibility to desist from violence directed at an African, who are all Africans. It is not by choice or design that migrants who find themselves in South Africa came because they like South Africa because of the weather or they dislike their homes. It is the treatment they received from their own political leaders. And the political leadership of those countries must take responsibility. Some politicians used the state, like in the case of Zimbabwe, in the case of DRC, in the case of Rwanda, against the those they did not agree with. There was a genocide in Matebeland and Midlands, as I've said, in Zimbabwe. There was a genocide in Rwanda. There's been violence in the Democratic Republic of Congo in Burundi. We know the Biafra War in Nigeria. And across the continent, violence has been used as a tool. And the victims of the violence orchestrated by the state are poor people. Many ran from their countries, running away from this violence. They found themselves now living in South Africa. Some are victims, economic victims. In the case of Zimbabwe, in the case of DRC, in the case of a number of countries, Mozambique, where, where those elected into power are simple looting resources. They've destroyed the economy either through the neoliberal agenda, 
poor policies that they pursue or through simple looting. And the poor people want to, to take care of their families, want to work for their families. They come to South Africa, they work in the farms, they work in poorly paid jobs just to survive, to put food on the table. They did not create conditions that are happening in their own countries. What is said is that every year, year in, year out, our leaders in the continent, whether in SADC, in ECOWAS, or African Union, they will meet in summits where they done together. They congratulate each other. I've never, maybe I've missed, which comrades will correct. I've never had any president of South Africa for that matter condemning what is happening in Zimbabwe. Because if a president does that, will be told of sovereignty that Zimbabwe is a sovereign state. When Zimbabweans mobilize themselves to elect a leader of their choice, the state uses its apparatus to deny them the right to elect those that they want to elect. And the poor people have no choice other than to skip the country. When they come to South Africa and the other Africans from different countries in the, across the continent, they compete for uh, uh, little resources in communities. This has led to violence. So it is important that all of us, we should be pushing our leaders that a SADC summit to discuss international migration must be held. There must be a SADC summit that specifically discuss the impact of international migration in the region that it has had in poor communities like Deep Slut where we are told that an African has been killed because a mob went to his house asking him to produce a passport and in the process was killed. We condemn such violence. We condemn the violence that happened as led by criminal gangs leading to the killing of innocent people in deep slot. There are people that have died in the hands of criminal gangs and we must isolate those. We must all of us join community policing forums and work together in communities to isolate criminal gangs. But, but the most important thing, which is key, is that the SADC leadership, in the case of our region, must take responsibility. There must be a SADC summit that begins to say what has been the impact of the ZANU-PF leadership or governance in Zimbabwe to its neighbors. How has this impacted to, to the region? Where today, thousands, thousands of young people are, are living in Zimbabwe. This must be discussed at that level because it cannot be correct. It cannot be correct that when President Ramaphosa and the President Emerson Mnangagwa, they meet, they smile, they dine together, but when poor people in communities from both countries are fighting each other, it cannot be correct. It is time, as we said previously, we fought together in the struggle for national liberation. An alliance was forged within the liberation, amongst the liberation movement. It is time to review that relationship. Because the struggle, as it was waged, it was not expected that poor people will leave their own countries after liberation and be seen as a burden to neighboring countries. That was not why we went to war. We went to war so that the commanding heights of the economy would be placed in the hands of society as a whole so that the people have a good life. 
the people will share in the wealth of the country. But this is not the case. The under, other danger that we must avoid, we know that in all the black-on-black -black violence, be it black-on-black -black violence in the 1990s in South Africa or Kukuraundi in Zimbabwe or across the continent, there is always some footprints of imperialist forces and capitalists that fund such wars. They celebrate when we blacks kill each other. And they want to believe that some vigilante groups that are now emerging are not funded by capitalists to fight blacks. So all of us as revolutionaries, let us isolate criminal gangs. But the leadership, political leadership in the region must be held accountable because it cannot be, it cannot be that the ANC will send its delegation as they did in 2018, send its delegation to say we are here in solidarity with the ZANU-PF. It cannot be. When ZANU-PF cannot rebuild its economy, leading to its own people coming to South Africa, and they're causing what we now see, which is now in front of us, let us allow, and this must be a message to every government in the region. Let us respect the sovereignty of the people, not the sovereignty of leaders. Let us allow people in a democratic process to elect their own leadership and they rebuild their economies. Let us not be in solidarity with the elite. It must be people to people solidarity. It should not be leadership to leadership solidarity, as we have seen in the past. Let us build people to people solidarity. The people of Eswatin have a serious, a serious crisis. And we are told that Satak has taken out a, a, the mediation in, in Swaziland. It's no longer there. This is what we are told, unless we are wrong. The people of Eswatin want freedom. And all of us, it, we must be in solidarity with the poor people, with the working people of Eswatin. We must be in solidarity with the poor people, with the working people, with the peasants in Mozambique. So that we are able to build our economies. The elitist solidarity has not assisted us. What the elitist, elitist solidarity has done is that the poor people who are victims of the neoliberal agenda, who are victims of autocratic regimes, they find themselves in South Africa and they will see the rights of a, a, a right-wing formations. That a, their mission is to drive migrants to their countries of origin without understanding the push factors. Zimbabwe is going to an election in 2023. And the SATAC, if it is genuine, the leadership in SATAC, it must insist that the elections in Zimbabwe must be held in a climate of free and a fair environment. It should not hide behind sovereignty because sovereignty does not protect the poor and the working class. It protects the political elite and the capital. And that this must be resisted. So we condemn criminal gangs. We must isolate criminal gangs. 
We condemn violence that is taking place. And we call on young people, particularly from Zimbabwe, that under any circumstances, they should not be involved in criminal activity. We call, call on, on the police in South Africa that it is their duty to arrest those that commit crime irrespective of nationality. It is not the duty of citizens, and we insist on this, to be inspecting people's documents. It is the duty of the state, it is the duty of the immigration officials, it is the duty of the police. The mob cannot inspect people's documents. Yes, we are agreeing that citizens have a role to play. As we are saying, citizens arrest, they have a role to play. But it must be structured. This is why we have community policing forums that all of us in our communities must be members of. And they work together. This is why the African Diaspora Forum speaks of social cohesion. We must not find ourselves in communities isolating each other. In a community, there should not be a migrant or a South African. It must, must be Africans living in peace and in harmony. This is why we are saying if we live together in, community, in a community, we must go together in church if we believe. We must go together in bars if we drink alcohol. We must belong to the same society in a community. We must do community work as a collective without them and us. It should not be happening in a community. If we are to build communities that are united, we condemn violence. We condemn crime. And then we call on the SATAC leadership to convene a summit on the impact of the international migration within the region, on what it has done in our communities, which has given rise to right-wing formations. Amanda, comrades.